All right, so presenting for Bloom Life is founder and CEO Eric D. Take it away. So there's one thing all of us here have in common. We all have a mom. And while it's known that the period from conception through the first thousand days of life are the most important for setting the trajectory of lifelong health and development for a child, we are failing women and babies at this time. Over the past several decades, pregnancy complications have been on the rise. Diseases such as gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, and preterm birth are global epidemics that not only cost our healthcare system billions of dollars annually, they often leave women and children with a lifetime of disability and chronic disease. For expecting moms, the road to motherhood can be full of uncertainty and lots of questions. For many women, the only time there's any sort of peace of mind is during their prenatal checkups. But these trips are inconvenient, expensive, and ultimately limited by 50-year-old antiquated technology, leaving moms with many more questions. My name is Eric D. I'm co-founder and CEO of Bloom Life, and we're here to change this. At Bloom Life, we're designing the future of prenatal care. With technology designed to improve the health of moms and babies, we combine wearable devices with data analytics to both reassure expecting moms and provide doctors with better information to improve birth outcomes. This is not another gadget; it's an accurate and reliable medical-grade product that is both convenient and easy to use, as my colleague McCall is about to show you. So, for for expecting moms, Bloom Life takes the guesswork out of pregnancy. And puts need-to-know information about her body and her baby at her fingertips. McCall has been wearing a Bloom Life sensor for a while now, so we have some data to show you. But to illustrate how easy it is to put on, she's going to put one on right now. So to use, a mom simply snaps the sensor into the disposable patch, and then puts that patch onto her belly. So we can switch back to the slides then. So Bloom Life works by measuring biopotentials in motion. The mom's heart's a muscle, the uterus is a muscle, and the baby's heart's a muscle, and each create a unique electrical signal which we can non-invasively measure through the sensor. The complex hardware-software integration you need to pull this off is extremely challenging. However, our team has over a decade experience developing similar systems for market leaders in cardiac and brain monitoring. If we could please switch this to the uh, app view. Overhead. So as you can see, McCall is in her third trimester, about to pop. Hopefully not on stage, and so contractions and labor are top of mind.、Uh, can we get the app better centered? There we go. All right. So as you can see, she's in her third trimester. Contractions and labor are top of mind for her. With Bloom Life, she's able to get a validated second opinion on what she's feeling, to figure out what what those weird pregnancy sensations are, as well as get information that helps her more easily communicate with her doctor. So through the app, what she could see is real-time uterine activity. When she has a contraction, a bubble will pop up and tell her how long that contraction is. Above, above that, you could actually see the contraction patterns as well. This lets her know whether or not the contractions are getting more regular or frequent, or whether or not they're irregular. And this is the best way for her to determine whether or not these are just Braxton Hicks contractions or actually potentially labor. And finally, above, we show automatically calculated stats, both the frequency and duration. So if McCall called her doctor and said, "Hey, I think something might be going on. I might be in labor," this is the exact information he's going to want to know from her. If we switch to the trends view right now, if McCall is wearing the product regularly over time, we're also able to show her how her body is preparing for labor. This gives her greater confidence that something's going on down here as she gets closer to the big day. So please switch back to the slides. So beyond contractions, where we start today, our amazing lightweight medical-grade sensor. Can measure the most important health parameters of mom and baby from conception to birth, and this includes pregnancy-specific information no other wearable can track today, such as fetal movement and fetal heart rate. This is a huge step forward. Existing solutions don't track anything about the health of the mom, and neither safe nor convenient for continuous use. And emerging solutions only track individual parameters of mom or baby. All of these features will be made, made available via over-the-air software updates. No additional hardware changes are necessary. Our product has been validated in four clinical studies so far, and we've shipped to over 500 beta users throughout the U.S. The feedback so far has been overwhelming. Moms have been sharing stories of how Bloom Life provided them peace of mind and helped them better connect with their body during this critical period of time. It's clear we're tapping into a passionate and engaged group that has been overlooked for way too long. 
We will first offer Bloom Life to direct to consumers via monthly subscription. With the subscription, moms receive the reusable sensor and disposable patches. After having her baby, she could easily, re easily return the sensor to us. As we build out our user base and further establish trust and credibility, we will scale sales via mom-to-mom -mom referrals and channel partnerships. Upon securing FDA clearance, we will seek reimbursement. Our goal is for Bloom Life to become standard of care, fully reimbursed, and utilized by doctors all over to better track and manage the health of their moms. And there's one last thing that excites us the most that I'd like to share with you. In partnership with the Bloom Life community of moms, we have an opportunity to crowdsource the largest and most comprehensive data set on maternal and fetal health ever collected. This is game changing. This critical data that's been impossible to capture till now will help power our cloud-based machine learning analytics to help doctors better predict and manage pregnancy complications before it's too late. In support of this mission, we've already built partnerships with four of the top cl clinical research centers globally, and we've already published pap five papers in the top medical conferences for OBGYNs. Here at CES, the role that technology plays in changing our lives Not is all around us. At Bloom Life, we believe it's time to start applying that technology to where it matters most, saving millions of families from the heartache of a lost child and making more healthy babies in this world. So join the prenatal health revolution today, spread the word about Bloom Life, and if you or anyone you know is expecting, visit us at bloomlife.com and reserve today. Thank you. All right, judges. First of all, uh, McCall, is that your name? Congratulations. That's exciting. I hope you're going to get a lot of time off and extra pay. Um, what, what part of the product do you need FDA approval for? So uh, we can launch right now um, with contractions where we're not diagnosing labor. Essentially, we're providing more um, objective and an easier way of measuring and timing contractions. Once we actually start differentiating between Brax and Higgs and labor, that'll be regulated. Um, fetal heart rate will be regulated. Um, fetal movement, that's something else we can launch in this sort of non-regulated regime and of course all the maternal health features. So is this just to measure whether you're going into labor or not? Is that the main, the main purpose or is it, is, again, it's very difficult to hear, but just listening to some of the other things, the heartbeat and all this, other, is that, when do, you, when do you start it? What month do you, does a woman wear it on? So, so right now, since the product's primarily offering contractions, it's really the third trimester. Okay. Um, We've seen women, especially high-risk moms, they want to get it throughout the entire third trimester. These are women that are at risk of preterm contractions, preterm labor. They use it the whole time. As we unlock the additional features, fetal movement, then it makes something from the second, third trimester into the second and third trimester. And maternal health, that's something that's obviously important throughout the entire pregnancy. What is the main cost savings for medical so you don't go in? Or too I mean, early? Is that, you know, is that what? So that, that's, that's one of the potential savings. Yeah. I mean, the cost that is spent in the U.S. alone on pregnancy and childbirth is over $100 billion a year. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge cost driver, especially for, um, for our self-insured employers. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're validating right now is our ability to actually reduce unnecessary healthcare utilization. So we have a pilot study right now going on with that. There's also um, quality of care. So it's having something that better helps moms more easily communicate with their doctors is something that is valued to both the moms and the doctors. So there's a lot of potential opportunities for us to provide, to get something that's useful to the clinical, clinical systems. Do you want to sit down? I feel like such a jerk. I'm, you, you, come, get her a chair. Can we get her a chair? No worries, man. <laughs> Thank you, though. Uh, based, on the, based on the trials and the data that you've collected so far, have, have you guys actually found any, any indicators that you can already speak to um, and have talked about with doctors and hospitals? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we're looking at right now is um, the ability to remotely detect labor. So labor is, of course, a physiological process. It's a change that happens in the body that today requires a mom to go to the hospital because they have to hook up to those two big belts, and they're monitoring contractions, also looking at whether or not the cervix is dilating. A lot of the data we're collecting is longitudinal over time, and we're looking at changes to a baseline, both contractions as well as other physiological conditions, such as the mom's heart rate and heart rate variability. And what we're hoping to do is be able to remotely detect labor onset, which, of course, is the starting point for being able to better predict when labor is going to happen. These two guys, uh, this Braxton and this Hicks guy, how did they get a natural function named after them? <laughs> I think one it's one guy. Oh, I think Molly's the best oh, one to answer one that guy, one. It's not two guys. It's just, that's his name. Yeah, so you could go, go I, visit the, 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 our medium area, and I think Molly has a post called, Who the Hell is Braxton Hicks and What's He Doing in My Uterus? Yeah, yeah well, like, it's not, like, vomit. There's not a guy named Vomit. Like, yeah, how do you, 
No, really. I'm just, he's got I, these mean burns. You should he, go no, check him out. He's what, a gnarly looking dude. He just discovered. He discovered contractions. Yeah, he well, just, he he discovered they didn't that, know about that it before. before they thought that women only have contractions during labor, but he discovered actually the uterine is toning itself. It's a muscle, okay. and it's toning itself as it gets ready for labor. The whole okay. female reproductive system is totally crazy. Yeah. You can stand on one of those shape scales and see your uterus growing, Dan. So, so given that it sounds like some of your business model works on, on uh, recycling the sensor itself, what are you doing to verify that the sensor is going to be clean and, and, and sterilized and back to the mom and sure. things like that? You know, I, so so part, part of it is, as you can see, like, I don't know if you guys have the system over there, the sensor never touches the body. There's a patch that that's snapped into, and so the sensor actually never comes in contact with the body ever. Obviously, we still have to do QA when it comes back in, and so we have an entire test protocol that we run th these things through. And this isn't so different than what, like, a Holter monitor in a hospital. Like, those get passed from patient to patient. Same thing, they run a QA program over to make sure that everything's actually operating properly. So I'm sorry if you said this in the presentation, but how are you wearing the sensor all the time or in specific, like, blocks of time? So actually, I mean, it, because it's non-invasive, women can wear it continuously one or two. There's no energy at all that's emitted into the body. That being said, we've seen women use it for different sort of use cases. Some high-risk moms that are really concerned that don't really feel their uterine contractions, they wear it all the time. Other moms, they want to have it as something that they check in at the end of every day to kind of see how things are going. Some women wear it overnight. And so that's something we're actually learning right now to see how do women integrate this into their life. Any other questions? Dan. What is the cost? You said the subscription, but right. that's only the last trimester. It's three months, right? So is, is subscription really the best way to do it, and how much is is it costing now to do so it? it's anywhere between 50 to 150 dollars a month depending upon the length of the subscription of course we, we plan on extending that again to the second trimester and the first trimester and honestly like the subscription is something that came back from our moms we started there sort of organically because we only had 10 systems when we first started beta testing and i didn't want to sell them to someone and then you don't get any feedback after that and so we offered to essentially rent them and women said i love that you guys rent this not knowing that it was sort of a temporary thing saying that they felt like it wasn't wasteful that after they had their baby their use for it isn't really there until the next baby. And so they said they like the ability to return it and let another mom use it. So it's actually something that, of course, they're using breast pumps right now and something that we've embraced. And actually, our users have found you know, something they, they appreciate. Well, one last question I have for you is, how does uh, the mother's BMI affect the efficacy of the device? Is that a big problem, considering that in the United States, the BMI is trending over 30? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, actually. So the existing technology is extremely sensitive to BMI. So it's a strain gauge, and so if you have high BMI, the fat attenuates the signal a lot, and so you don't get really any pressure change on the, on the, on the, on the surface of the skin. Because we're looking at the electrical activity, it's still attenuated a bit, but you could actually pick it up. You just sort of change a little bit sort of the, the gain on the electronics, and you could pick it up more easily. So it's actually better for high BMI women. Yeah. All right, we're out of time. Give it up for Bloom Life. And congratulations again. All right, we have one more company. It is Zmorph. Uh, come on up, Zmorph. Uh, and uh, editors, what it, I mean, sorry, judges, what did you uh, think of Bloom Live? Uh, well, they seem like they really have their stuff together, and it, it seems like that they're on the right path for for making sure that the the product is uh, reviewed and and able to be used independently and uh, verified, because that's one of the biggest things with all medical devices, is can it get past the FDA? I, I would think that the insurance companies would want to support this, because, you know, you, I had five of those, five of those, we went in five different times, these babies, and you could see that half of the women that go in, they, they send them home, right? So, it's got to be a huge amount of cost in this kind of thing, and, and you know, the only, the, only, the only thing is if you get a like a false positive or a false negative, you're running some troubles, right? But I, I think that you know, knowing whether or not you're in labor is not, it's not just like a bright line. I guess sometimes it is, right? But most of the time, people, the women don't know, and their husbands definitely don't know. So. Yeah. I, I, so much of this comes down to trust, too. Um, you know, it, it, it's, this is not like, you know, if you have a Fitbit and it doesn't catch a step once or twice, um, if, there's, if there's any false negative on this, uh, you know, if, you, if a user loses trust, it's a big issue, so they obviously have to do a lot of tuning around that.